Okay, so let's look at some more examples here for this section. So we're going to solve the given proportion for the variable. And so all we really do is we're just going to do the cross product as we talked about last time. And we're just going to take that times that, set that equal to that times that. So we're going to take 8 times 18 equals 9 times x. Now we just solve for x like we do normally in our equations. So we divide by 9 divide by 9, so those cancel. Now I notice that 9 will go in here once, it'll go in here twice, so then I get x equals 8 times 2, which is just 16. And so that then is my solution to what x is here. So, and if we think about that, 8 times 2 is 16, 9 times 2 is 18, so that seems to work well. All right. Now this time we have a little bit more uh, complex number here. We have 3x plus 12 instead of just a plain x. And so we're going to take 2 times 3x plus 12 equals 6 times 3. Okay. Well, first off, we're going to divide by 2. And so that's going to be gone. That's going to be gone. 2 will go in here once. 2 will go in here three times. So we have 3x plus 12 equals 9, 3 times 3. Now we'll subtract off 12. Well, when we do that, we get 3x equals, now think about that, that's 12 minus 9, so that's going to give us a 3, but the sign of the larger is negative, so it's going to be a negative 3. Now we divide by 3, and so x is equal to a negative 1. Now does that make sense? Well, 3 times a negative 1 is negative 3, plus uh, 12 is going to give us a 9. And if we take and reduce this fraction by 3, that's going to give us a 3, that's going to give us a 2, and that's what we're back to here. And so that does look like it is the correct answer. Or we could do the cross product again, and it should come up with the same answer as well. All right. What about these? So now a couple more examples. Uh, again, simple one first, then a little more complex one second. So that's going to give us 3x equals 22 times 21. Well, we divide by 3. So that cancels, that cancels. Well, 3 will go in here once, 3 will go in here 7 times. So we have x equals 7 times 22. So x equals 7 times 22. That's going to be 14. That's going to be 15. So we get 154 is our answer to this one. Okay. And so we had to take this one basically times 3 to get here. So if we, I mean, times 7 to get to 21. So if we take that one times 7 to get to the next one, we get that one and we get 154 on that. So that looks good. Now, cross product here. Well, that's going to give us 3 times 2x plus 9 equals 9 times 13. Again, I'm not going to multiply it all out because that's going to get me some large numbers. I'm going to start and get rid of the 3 out in front there first. So that cancels that. And then here, 3 goes in here once, and it goes in here 3 times. So then I get 2x plus 9 equals 3 times 13. Well, 3 times 13 is going to give me 39. Now I can subtract 9. Again, just doing solving equations like we've been doing. And so that gives me 2x equals 30, divide by 2, so x is equal to 15, okay? So 2 times 15 is 30, plus 9 is 39. Well, if we divide by 3, that's 3, divide by 3, that's 13, and that gives us our 13 over 3, so that looks good, okay? So that's uh, solving uh, different proportions for x, and so now, Let's go to the next one, which is going to be um, where we have two apples cost so much. Another one has nine apples cost X amount. We have to find how much that X amount is. So we're going to say 2.054, and that was two apples. We'll call it 2A equals, now we don't know this one, so X over 9A, okay? So what we're going to do then is, is we're going to have to do our cross product and then we're going to go ahead and divide. So we're going to take that times that and that times that. So we'll take 9 times 2.055, not 9. All right, so that was 205 times 9. And that's equal to 2 times x. 
Well, so now we just divide by 2. So x equals. And now to the nearest penny, that means once we get to the division part, we have to go out to three decimals so we can round up to that penny. All right, so first off, it looks like we're going to have to take 2.05 times 9. So that's going to give us 45. That's going to give us 18, two decimal places, so it's 1845. So that was pretty easy. Now we have to divide by 2, it says. So put our decimal here. So then 9, that gives us 18. Subtract, we get 0. Bring down our 4, and that's going to be a 2. That's going to give us a 4. Subtract, we get 0. Bring down our 5. That's going to give us another 2. That's going to give us 4. Subtract, we get 1. Now we go to that third one we said we had to do. That's 0. Well, that's going to give us a 5. That's 10. Subtract, we get 0. And so our answer is 9.225 exact. But we need to round to the nearest penny. So that's going to give us $9.23 is what it's going to cost for the nine apples. Now again, this is one that's not going to come back out exact because we didn't use the exact number here. So if we took 2.05 times 9 and then 2 times 9.23, they're not going to be exactly equal. But if we took it times the 9.225, then they would be equal exactly. All right. All right, so this one's a little more long drawn out one. So this one says, Alaska's 26,000 square mile Tungus National Forest plan allows for timber sales of up to 267 million board feet per year, enough for nearly 27,000 two-bedroom homes. But demand for timber is far short of that. Less than 25 million board feet was logged in the forest in 2009. Forest Service officials have said they hope to increase logging in the Tungus to about 100 million board feet per year. Estimate the number of two-bedroom homes at 25 million board feet of timber will build, and how about 100 million board feet? All right, so we have two proportions, one in this one and one in this one that we have to solve for. So it says we have uh, 267 million board feet is going to give us 27,000 two-bedroom homes. And then what it says is how much does 25 million board feet give? How many? How many bedroom homes would it be? Well, I'm going to take strictly the number out in front. I'm going to drop off the million, and I'm also going to take strictly this number. I'm going to drop off the thousands. And then when I do this one, I'll take strictly the 25, drop off the million. And then when I find my number of uh, houses it can build, I have to remember, I have to add on those three zeros again. Okay, so this is just to make it so I'm not taking 267 million over the 27,000 equals 25 million over X and then solving and having all those zeros I could, I could get lost with. And so I'm just going to make it a little simpler, I hope, and make it uh, so it's easier to work with numbers. And so with 267 million board feet uh, per year, uh, I can build 27,000 homes. And so now I want to know how many will 25 million board feet build. And so that's going to be my equation, or proportion rather. And then now I'm going to make the equation out of it by doing the cross product. So that's 267x equals 25 times 27. Okay. Well, then I just divide by 267. And now what I have to do is I have to start multiplying and then dividing. So uh, I don't know which one's better to put on top. I'll just put the bigger one on top and then the smaller one on the bottom. So 5 times 7 is going to be 35. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 3 is 13. Then 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So that gives me 675 on the numerator. And so that gives me x equals 675 out of 267. So I need to divide that out. And so I think I probably better go to the next page because it's going to be a long number, I think, because I have to go out to four decimal places because I, I have to drop, I have three, I have to add. 
So 675 over 267. So I'm going to take 267 into 675.1234. I have to go out to the 4 because when I get done, I'm going to multiply by 1,000, which is three zeros. So I'm going to put it back to here. And so then I have to know if I round up to the nearest home or not. Okay. So multiplying this out, uh, this is almost 300. And so I think that should probably only go in twice. So we'll put. 267 times 2, that's 14, that's 12, 13, that's 534. So 534, subtract that off. 5 minus 4 is 1, 7 minus 3 is 4, 6 minus 5 is 1. Now we can bring down our first 0. Now if I take this times 2, that'll give me uh, a little under that, so maybe 267 times 5. All right, so that's 5 times 7 is 35. That's 33. <clears throat> that's 13. So that's going to be a 5 here. So that's going to be 1, 3, 3, 5. Subtract that off. Well, that's going to go down to 3. That's going to go to a 10. So 10 minus 5 is 5. 10 minus 3 is 7. That's nothing. So now I bring down my next 0. All right, so now um, if I add another 267 here, what do I get? That's going to be 11. That's going to be a 10. That's going to be 8. That's too big. So it <clears throat> looks like only 2 here again. And so that was 534. And if I borrow 1 there, that's going to be 10 minus 4 is 6. 4 minus 3 is 1. 7 minus 5 is 2. Now I bring down the next one zero. All right, so here it can't be uh, twice, obviously. So 267, uh, I don't know, times eight maybe. <clears throat> That's 56, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. That's 1621. That looks good, so we'll use an eight here. And so that's that's eight. That's 2136. Subtract that off. That becomes a 5. 10 minus 6 is 4. 5 minus 3 is 2. Now we can bring down our next 0. And 267 goes in there 0 times. And so now I should have what I need. So I've got 2.5280. If we go back up, that's going to be equal to 2.5. What was it? 280. Now remember, this was, you know, uh, 27,000 homes. So I have to multiply this times 1,000. And when I do that, I get 2528.0. And so that's how many homes I can actually produce here. So for this one, x is equal to 2528 homes for 25 million board feet. All right, so that is the answer to number one. Now, for number two, we could do two things. We could see that, hey, you know, 25 to get to 100, well, what do we have to take 25 by to get to 100? Well, if we take that times four, we get 100. So we could just take this number, times 4 and get a value. And we could also do our ratio. But since we're doing ratios, that's really what we're going to do here. So let's go ahead and do our ratio again. Now we have 267 million board feet, and that would build 27,000 homes. Now we have 100 million board feet, and we want to know how many homes will that build. All right, well, guess what? Cross product again and multiply and divide. So 267x equals 27 times 100 is going to be 0, 0. Now divide by 267. So x equals, and now all we have to do is just put that into work into play and say 267 into 2700.1234. All right, so 267, I'll go in here once. 
That's two, that's a 267. And when we subtract that off, we get three. Bring down a zero. Well, that goes in zero times. Bring down the next zero. Well, that goes in one time again. That's 267. And so that's a two, that's a nine. So 10 minus seven is three, nine minus six is three. And now we bring down the next zero. Well, that's again one, that's 267. So we subtract that. So that's a two, that's a 12. 10 minus seven is three, 12 minus six is six. And now we can bring down our next zero. All right, so this one looks like it's a little bigger. So now let's, we take two, uh, let's not put it there. Um, let's put it over here, 267 times two maybe. That's 14 and that's 12, 13, that's four, five, 34. All right, and that was with two. So subtract that off, that's a five, that's a 12. 10 minus four is six, 12 minus three is nine. And now we bring down our last zero. And so 960, so it's gonna be, uh, well, let's try plus 267, that's gonna be 11, that's a 10. And it's gonna be 801, and two more won't go in there, so that has to be a three then. And that's going to be 801. Subtract that. So that's a 5. So 10 minus 1 is 9. 5 minus that's 5. That's 1. So now we've got enough. So we've got that's equal to 10.1123. But remember, we have to multiply that by 1,000 because it's thousands of homes. And so that's going to be x equals 1012112. Point three. Point three doesn't round up, so it's 10,112 homes for 100 million board feet. Okay, and so that's then the answer for part two. And that's all I have for you today.